I know you must be impatiently waiting for our next session, right? I would like to welcome Sandan Fernando, who is a worldwide impromptu speaking champion in 2021, Toastmaster District 82 champion for evaluation and impromptu speaking in 2016, Master practitioner in NLP, certified trainer, business and life coach with over 6,000 hours of training experience. So, are you ready to find how to catch the perfect way? Sandhu, over to you. Thank you, Netmi. And I hope I'm loud and clear. <clears throat> Sorry. Yes. Right. Well, let me start by asking the question, is there a perfect way? Let's let's keep the chat active from the very beginning because I need to tell you online can be very tricky. Some of you might already be browsing your social media with your camera switched off. Some of you might be reading something interesting, catching up on the minister swearing in, the latest on the protest. <laughs> so let's let's keep it interactive for all of us. Is there a perfect wave? I see Damit, Dara, Gayashan, Tulak. Right, okay. Alok, uh, are you guys copy pasting or is everybody saying that there is no perfect wave? Interesting. Samira, good. Samira is telling, yes, there is. Chatrakas want Chatraka wants to know what do I mean by the perfect wave? Right. Since you are talking about catching the wave, the wave I am talking about is the wave of high performance. Right? The wave of high performance. So let me start my session by giving you a little bit of a paradox on the topic. Right? I said catching the perfect wave and I am going to start by saying there is no one perfect wave but when you know how to catch the wave you can make seemingly any difficult wave the perfect wave. How's that? I'll repeat it slowly there is no such thing called one perfect wave but once you know how to catch the wave once you learn the art of catching the wave you can make any difficult or any ordinary wave your perfect wave right good thanks chadraka Right, Lakshan, keep the comments coming. Let me tell you what do I mean by that. What I want to share with you are four simple yet proven principles on how to accelerate performance in any selected field. Whether you are a tech enthusiast who's working in the technology space or whether you are an entrepreneur who's starting off a business in a different industry, in production, agriculture, manufacturing, anything. Or you might even be the parent, the mother or the father, who's hoping to be the best parent that you can be. Or for that matter, you might be the best husband or the wife or the boyfriend or the girlfriend or the student. Or you might even be the part-time sportsman Whatever it is, whatever the discipline that you choose to perform in life, let me share with you four simple principles, proven, you will know why I say proven, that is going to help you get into that jet stream of performance acceleration. The technique that is going to help you catch that wave, any wave, and convert it into the perfect wave, right? If you're ready, type yes. Let's keep the 
chat active so that way i know for sure because i can't see you i know for sure that you're not browsing social media because i can understand today is a very interesting day there's a lot of social media activity going on so many comments coming about where our country is heading but for the next half an hour let's stay here right excellent thank you very much thank you very much so let me start this here as Nitma was very nice to introduce me, giving some of my achievements in Toastmastering. And for the benefit of those of you who are not familiar with Toastmasters, it's a global movement that enables individuals to develop their public speaking and communication skills, mostly as well as leadership skills, right? And this is a voluntary organization, almost 95 years, globally more than half a million active members at any given time. and and I hear that Toastmasters is the most active global organization next to the United Nations. At present, about 140 countries globally. Now, Toastmasters, I joined Toastmasters back in 2009. And Toastmasters, apart from improving individuals, it also has a formula or a format where there are competitions. And globally, Contestants take part in competitions starting at different levels at the smallest level, which is your club goes all the way up. There are four categories, one category, only one category goes on to the, the world championship of public speaking. Some of you might know one of our dear friends and a mentor, a mentor, Dhananjay Hetyar, she's the only Sri Lankan to win that in 2015. That is for the category called prepared speeches, five to seven minutes, you deliver a prepared speech on a topic that is selected. Then there are three other categories. One is called evaluation speech. You evaluate a speech delivered by another person as a competition. Whoever gives the best evaluation, that is that category. Humorous speaking, that is where you deliver a prepared speech, but the main objective is to be entertaining, humorous, to make others laugh. Not standard comedy that we are used to, but a speech that has structure, that has meaning and humor. And then the fourth category is called impromptu speaking, where you simply stand on a stage, they read a topic, and for the next two to three minutes, you have to speak on that. And when I say a topic can be any topic, can be any topic that is under the sun, right? So there are four of these categories. And like I said, in Toastmasters, I love competitive speaking. That is my sport. And for all of you who's rolling your eyes thinking, is public speaking really a sport? Yes, it is. It's a contest. It can get very challenging and very competitive. So in 2014, I started in 2009 and I got into competitions pretty much in 2010 itself. And by 2011, the bug has caught on to me. And... Like I said, Dhananjay Hetyarachi being a close friend, seeing him excel in competitions, going to different levels. I also got inspired and I started taking part. And I realized I also had a skill in some of these areas. To cut a long story short, in 2014, two of the four categories that I mentioned, evaluation speech and impromptu speaking, I was able to go up to what is called the district level. That is the highest level for those two categories. World Championship is from prepared. I went to the highest level in 2014. I became the first runner up in both categories in one year. And I was very excited. However, I was the first runner up. And after that, I thought next year, now that I have come this close and made it becoming the first runner up next year, I'm going to be the champion. And 2015, contest season started. As expected, club level, area level, division level. I was advancing through winning all these competitions and some of them are knockout. So if you don't place first, you don't go on to the next level. 2015, impromptu speaking, I was in the district finals, but I did not even place. 2015 evaluation speech contest. I didn't even make it to the district finals. In fact, 
I was the third place at division level, thereby knocked out. So, my first principle of accelerating your performance in any selected field is I'm going to title the principle as goals and I'm going to explain a little bit to you. You need to have a goal and I'm not going to spend some time explaining this to you. All of you would have heard about it. If you have done your high school or your undergraduate studies, they would tell you about the smart characteristics of goals, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time bound. All of that things are good about goals. But let me tell you a little bit of a different story about goals that we might get confused with. That is, you need to set yourself a goal, a big audacious outlandish goal of even becoming the president of a country whether you win or lose the election doesn't matter that's a joke for another day but <clears throat> starting off you can set yourself an outlandish goal that needs to be there but after the goal what happens that is the important thing right <laughs> guy has got the joke so I'm sure the rest of you also got it. And I do understand that we have some international guests as well, participants as well. So this is a bit of a Sri Lankan joke these days we're using. You will catch up, don't worry. So you need to have a goal, but the next thing that you need to do after you establish your goal is, hear this out, forget about it. Yeah, I said it right, forget about it. You might think, really? So many people say that you need to talk about your goals, you need to focus about it, you need to talk, yeah, yeah, visualization, putting it on your vision board, all of this is true. But let me tell you something that I missed out, that I want to share with you, that is going to give you some headway into achieving your goal, is the fact that if you spend too much of time, thank you, Marlon, if you spend too much of time thinking only about the goal, right, thinking only about the goal, talking only about the goal, where do you have time to action? Because remember, once you set the goal, and pretty much in most cases for all of us, the goal is like an end state. It is a point of achievement. But do you know something? Goal, for that matter, I'm going to use the word success also interchangeably. Success is not one big action. It is not the one achievement that is going to give you that glory and the fulfillment. Right? You can, you can use the loopholes in the constitution and you can, you can use the situation and become the president of the country. Your goal is achieved. Is it? Will you be remembered? Will you be respected? Will your goal make a difference? That's a completely different story. So that's what I want you to understand that you can have a goal, but beyond that, you need to understand that getting to that goal requires you to build yourself worthy of that goal. That is the, the only way that after winning that goal, you will enjoy that goal. Your goal will make a difference, not only in your life, but in the life of everyone else. So your goal could be to land a job as a software architect or, a, or an entrepreneur designing the fantastic product. Yes. But remember, the day you land that company, that job, do that product, if you think everything is going to be done after that, you're mistaken. You need to maintain this, this product. You need to upgrade it. You need to take care of customers. You can ask uh, Jan and everyone here that starting a business is probably the easiest thing that you can do. And if that is your goal, you can achieve it tomorrow morning. 80,000 rupees, register the business. But developing that product, keeping that customers, engaging your staff like this wonderful thing that uh, Bistec is doing, empowering and engaging your staff that they stay with you. And they, this is a whole different story. So coming back and re-emphasizing the goal, which is the first principle, setting the goal is only the first step of achieving it. 
and forgetting it is the second and the most important thing about achieving that. I don't mean to say that you're going to forget and throw the goal away. No, I'm going to talk to you about not spending too much of time invested only in the goal, but do realize that you need to now free up your mind, your energy, your focus, and start working towards it. That brings me to the second principle. Before I move to the second principle, let me tell you, in 2015, after 2014 success and in 2015 being absolutely disappointed with my performance, I went back and asked myself, what happened? And I realized in 2014, when I got very close to my goal, becoming the first Sri Lankan to win the first runner up in two categories in one year, I got complacent. I walked around thinking next year is a cakewalk. I'm going to win the two championships and become the first Sri Lankan to go ahead and do that. That's what I thought about myself. And it didn't. Reality gave me a hard lesson and said, no, son, everyone else out there is fighting as hard as you or even harder. And then what happened was two people who did better than me that year became winners. So I went back and started working on the second principle. The second principle is once your goal is clear, you've got to understand that you need to build uh, the discipline of a routine. Little things that you do on a daily basis, repeatedly, again and again and again. That is what is going to get you closer to that goal. I repeat, it is the discipline of building successful routines that is going to get you closer to the goal. I'm going to talk to you about a couple of sports figures that I absolutely love. Michael Phelps, let's start with that. Arguably, the greatest Olympian ever. 27 Olympic medals. If I'm not mistaken, about 14 gold medals. I could be wrong, but 27 Olympic gold medals. Since 2010, sorry, 2008 to 2012, or 2012 to 2016, four years, the four year period between two Olympics, I probably apologize if I get the years wrong, every day, every day, for minimum four hours, but on average close to about six hours, he has been in the pool swimming. Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year break, you name it, every day this gentleman has been training. Mind you, this is not to get qualified to Olympics. Mind you, this is not to take part in his second Olympics. Mind you, this is not to win his first Olympic. No, this is after he has been the most successful Olympian, he went back for four years, swam. That is the discipline. That is the routines that you need to get into. Because what he says is every stroke in that pool, every minute, every hour that I spent, I knew I was developing my skills and my strength to be able to come back in the next four years. Because my body is aging four years. There's going to be younger people in their prime who's going to come and compete with me. If I want to be on top of that game, just because I have won in the past and I've been, won so many gold medals and kept so many records, I cannot walk in and win. I need to build the discipline of routines, managing my diet, training my techniques, doing all of this again and again and again. I realized this after losing in 2015. I went back and I had a good self-reflection of what were those little things that I needed to be doing on a regular basis that is gonna improve my technique, that is gonna improve my confidence, that's gonna improve my knowledge, that is going to take me to the next level. Right? The important thing is you got to identify these routines and then you got to start building them. And I realized I need to see a lot of speeches of successful people. I need to spend a lot of time outside of Toastmasters learning about public speaking. Remember my two categories, evaluations, speech evaluations, and impromptu speaking. 
Impromptu speaking meaning you've got to be up to date with current affairs. You've got to be able to pick on a topic that is given immediately and speak about it. So you've got to be well read to a great extent. You've got to have reflections on your life. You've got to know and collect material as a speaker. I started doing that. Trust me when you do it, it's so boring. It's so dull. I often remember my wife asking like, how do you always listen to all these things? Whenever I'm at home, I'm doing some work, I'm ironing, I am doing some washing, I'm doing some uh, plates, whatever I'm doing, I'm listening to something. What am I doing? I'm listening to speech and content that's going to help me improve my speech evaluations and my impromptu speaking. Get into the routine. Every opportunity that I get to be a part of a club meeting, I go there, I take the opportunity and I deliver a speech. I talk to my friends, get invited into their clubs, go there, practice. A year of doing this, a year of doing this. Just like Michael Phelps, get into the routine. Now, second principle, the discipline of routines. If whatever your goal may be, whatever your goal may be, right, you know what, let's do something. I'm gonna give all of you 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Use the chat and if you dare, type a short-term goal that you're working towards. One year, one and a half years, what do you want to achieve? Type it here, let the world know. And let me know that you're clear about your goal because without a goal, you don't know where you're heading. You may have written it down somewhere. Take a minute if you like to share whether it is the next move in your career, whether it is to take an entrepreneurial journey, whether it is in your personal life, your role that you're playing as a father, as a husband, as a child, or whether it is your academics, you're trying to finish your master's, you're trying to finish another qualification, whether it is, whatever it is, whether it is to get, whether it is to find a new president, <laughs> I'm kidding, whatever it is. Okay, Nethmi, that's good, best, best version of myself, good, good. Gaishan, well done, to be an SSC, great. Certifies AWS Architect. Well done, Chandima. Thank you. Well done, Chatroka. Thanks a lot for sharing. Great. So, once you know this goal, the next point is the discipline of routine. Ask yourself, what should I be doing daily, weekly, monthly, that is going to make sure that I increase my chances of achieving that goal? Let me just use Chandima or Chandima. Sorry about that. Becoming a software uh, sorry, AWS architect. Maybe one of the things that you need to do is master the technology and the knowledge when it comes to AWS. You may know already, so knowledge is one aspect that you need to get, right? That might be to educate yourself, whether it is to sign up with uh, some of the AWS courses or whether it is to sign up at an institute, you need to improve your knowledge. And then the next thing is you probably need to get into the, the discipline of software design and architecture side of it. Maybe whether it is in your, if it is at work in your organization in order to become an architect, you need to talk to your superiors and find out what are my KPIs? What do I need to achieve? Like that, you've got to identify what are those things I need to do that is gonna take me to that level, <clears throat> right? Once you do that, you can't be expecting to do it once and then think, ah, that's it. No, you need to build a routine around it. Let's take another example. All right. How many of you here <coughs> have had the goal of losing weight? I'm just taking it random. Losing weight or getting fitter. How many of you have had that goal? And how many of you have failed short of that? Meaning you have the goal, but you didn't achieve it. If you have had the goal and didn't achieve it, just type yes. It's okay. We're all being honest here. Right. It's a lot of us. Now, here's the thing. All of us have this goal. And all of us know. All of us sometimes go and sign up at a gym. Probably play a personal trainer. Maybe for a while we start doing like a keto diet or intermittent fasting. We take that. What is it? What does my wife take? Tadna shape up tea. Something. Some green tea that cuts fat or something. You do that. Right? You take your supplements, you do that, but that's just one time. However, if you go back and you look at those people who has the chiseled body, who has lost their weight, 
who's looking like the figure that you want to be. And if you talk to them, you will realize these people do something that you have stopped halfway. They take the pain of waking up every morning, either going for their jog, doing their cycling or going to the gym, lifting those weights. They do that again and again and again. Right? They do that. It's dull. It's boring. Some days they don't feel like it, but they turn up and they repeat the routine. If it is their diet, yes, we can all take a break now and then. We can have a cheat meal. We can have a cheat day. You don't have to work all seven days. We are not trying to be Michael Phelps, right? But if you give yourself a target of five days of doing your exercises or four days of doing your exercises, build the discipline of, okay. And let me share with you one thing that will help you accelerate. That is, when you build a routine around the things that you need to repeat on a regular basis to get better, do your best to do them according to a fixed schedule. What do I mean by this? If you want to go to the gym four days a week, don't keep it open saying four days out of the seven. Very high chance of you missing out. Instead say Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. These four days of the week, I am doing it. What is the time? Morning or afternoon? When you put that discipline of fixing that routine in your schedule, you know for a fact that Monday and Tuesday morning, 6 o'clock, I have to be in the gym. So that means Sunday night, I can't be out late. That means Thursday evening, I'm going to the gym. That means Thursday evening, you can't agree to go meet up with drink, uh, friends for a drink. No, because you know this is my routine that I'm not going to negotiate. I'm not asking you to be a robot and schedule every minute of your day. No. Related to your goal, pick out those tasks that you need to do, the important tasks, schedule them and make sure that you have a routine, the discipline around your routine, right? That is the second principle that I did. And the third principle that is very important is that you need to have your reviews in place. What do I mean by review is that you need to have a method of evaluating these action that I am taking. Is it taking me closer to my goal? I will use that example of losing weight. You might have decided for yourself that I'm going to go to the gym four times a week. You might have decided that I'm either going to take a keto diet or I'm going to do intermittent fasting. Fine. After you start doing it and you do this, say for about a month or say for about two months, you got to review and see, have I lost weight? Because remember this, just because a routine is successful to somebody or in theory, maybe it is not applicable to you. You never know, right? So unless you do a review of your performance to see, of your routines to see, am I making progress towards the goal that I am going, right? You might end up doing fantastic things as a routine, but after a while you may never make it to your goal. Principle three, reviews. This is why at work, we have our scrum meetings. This is why at work, we have our appraisals as business reviews and as individual appraisals because we need to come together. We need to discuss about what we've been doing and we need to ask, am I making progress? Did I get closer? The reviews are important. And let me share with you, since you've been a lovely audience, let me share with you something a little extra on that. When you review, Try to do it with somebody who is more knowledgeable than you in your respective goal area. Try to review it. You can call them a coach. You can call them a mentor. You can even call them a friend who has gone ahead and achieved it. It can be formal if you want. It can be informal. doesn't matter. But it is important that you do not only do a self-reflection. Because, right? OKR. Yes, Chaturaka. That's right. OKR is, a, is a, a framework that is used in product companies that does that. Similar. Yes, that's true. You need to go back and check. And if you do it on your own, with the knowledge that you have, you might not know important information, current information, latest information that might help you to fast track your performance. For example, let's go back to I think it was uh, Chandima who said who wants to be an AWS, AWS architect. 
right? You might probably think, okay, in order to be an architect, I want to be, uh, I want to have an MSc, right? You might think I want to do an MSc or there might be a certain education path that you thought because three years ago or five years ago, you worked in a company or architect had an MSc. So now you think, okay, I need to have an MSc to become an architect. Could be, there might be. However, if you talk to people who are, who are in the business right now and who have become an architect in the latest, you might realize they don't have an MSc. Instead, they have qualifications in some other area, right? Or for that matter, maybe they are not so qualified in their professional or academic qualifications, but they have done some work where their knowledge is absolutely wonderful. Let me share with you a technique on that or, or, a, or a simple example on that. That is, have you ever heard of a technology qualification, a software engineering degree or something that taught blockchain? I'm sure right now, most of the courses might be given that as an introduction. Agree, Chandima, right? However, when the first blockchain was introduced to the world, when that IP was shared, when Bitcoin came, has anybody studied that or did it come as a result of practical work? I'm sure it is not some kind of an academic research. It's a lot of practical work. So imagine that person probably is not even, again, pardon me, I'm not very familiar with the founders of blockchain technology, but the person might not be an academic professor who's teaching that. No, the person worked on it, created that. So my point being, why do you need to review with somebody who's current and who has achieved that is because what you learned five years ago that you think I need to do to get there might not be relevant right now. Technology might have improved. The, the knowledge out there might have changed. So you need to, when you review, in order, to, in order to check whether what you're doing is right or wrong, you need to have somebody who has that knowledge. And if you have that, your review with yourself as well as with somebody who knows, <coughs> Sorry. And this is where in 2015, I worked together with, uh, because in 2014, my friend and my mentor, Danja Hetkiach, went on to win the world championship. After winning the world championship, he continued to improve his speaking in a, in a tremendous way. He became, he became probably 10x better than when he won in 2014. By the time 2015, 16 came, he was a global keynote speaker, speaking to audiences in excess of 5,000, 7,000 people. So I, I continue to go and learn from him also, apart from learning and practicing. I did my presentations, got his feedback. My reviews were happening, right? The fourth and the last principle that I want to share with you is this, is that you will never you will never become worthy of the goal that you achieve if you do not know how to enjoy and celebrate your life and everything that you do. Celebrations, the fourth principle. You must live life as a celebration, not as a suffering. I'm going to tell you something very, very, very sensitive and controversial right now. I spoke about Michael Phelps. How many of you know that, I believe it was not 2020 or 19 Olympics? The one before that. London 2012, was it Rio 2016? I think it was Rio 2016, right? London 2012, sorry, I could get it wrong. However, one before last Michael Phelps Olympics, after he has achieved tremendous and he said that he's going to retire from the sport, right? Do you know that in less than one year, Michael Phelps went through one of the darkest periods of his life, became suicidal, heavily depressed, and he, London 2012, Gaishan, thank you. After that, he became suicidal to the point of taking his own life. Why? Because after smashing those world records and, and ending on the highest note possible of being the greatest Olympian ever, he didn't know what to do with his life. 
He didn't know how to enjoy the success of that. He didn't know how to celebrate life for what it is because he's just got fixated in that goal and that lifestyle to the point that it almost took him away. Now park that. He recovered out of that with the help of some great mentors. He came back and and blew everyone away when he came back in 2016 as well and renewed some of his records. That's not the part I want to talk about. The second athlete that I want to talk about, the greatest sprinter to have ever lived. 9.58, the Jamaican Thunder, right? Now, why am I using as him? The fourth principle of celebration of life is natural in this man's body. Right? There is a wonderful uh, documentary done by BBC about the life of Usain Bolt. When you watch that, you realize, again, needless to say, a lot of you probably here associate with the culture of Jamaica. When you are a Jamaican, you know man how you live life, right? So, Usain Bolt, even before he smashed the world record in 2010, the world championship before that, he was disqualified for a false start, right? He came back afterwards. He came back afterwards and then he won the next world championship. And even before he won Olympics, he lost to his teammate and training partner, Johan Blake, right? When you look back and see, there's going to be a lot of failures. Just because you establish principle one, principle two, principle three, that doesn't guarantee you're going to get into success. That doesn't guarantee that you're going to smash your goals. Unfortunately, life is such that there are events that you cannot predict, right? Life is such that it's very difficult to stay focused into a routine every day. You're going to falter. You're going to miss out. You're probably going to spend more time not doing what you are supposed to do. How is this connected to celebrations? The fact that Apart from your goal, you do have a life and in that life, you enjoy things. In that life, there are things that you do and that, that make sense, that make you feel like I'm alive. I am not defined by my goal. Chandima, by all means, I wish you well to become that AWS architect very soon. But my friend, I want you to know that whether you become that or not, you are not anything less. Whether you become that or not, you are not anything less, right? You've got to understand life is more than your goals. Life is more than achievement and achievement and achievement. When you understand that and you know to celebrate little things in every day of your life, you do realize that you get into this state, what is called the flow. I'm not going to talk about that. That's a different story for another day. Once you get into the flow, everything that you do, become so one with yourself that you don't need to sit and think about it, right? Imagine Usain Bolt, when he stand on that starting lineup, he knows the eight other runners, the nine other runners who's running with him. Everybody has run 100 meters in less than 10 seconds, right? And when you run that race, you only need a fraction of a second's error for the other person to win. When you know that your pressure is surmounted, enormous, it might even break you. However, you need to know that you've got to be able to take that pressure. And at that point, you can't think about everything that you have done to practice, to get techniques. No. In that next 10 seconds, you've got to trust that I'm going to flow, I'm going to fly, and I'm going to achieve my goal. And have you seen how Usain Bolt starts races? Does he show that, oh my God, I'm going to run with the 10 fastest runners in the world. If I get even a fraction of a second, I'm going to lose. No, he's laughing. He's cheering the crowd. He's getting everyone, does his thing. Because he knows from this point onwards, I need to flow. Flow comes when you know to enjoy and, and, and celebrate life. I learned about this in 2016. And I told myself, you know what? Yes, I want to win and I want to be a great speaker and do all of that. But I asked myself why I established why I wanted to do that. 
because I want to influence people, like in this great opportunity that I got with Bistek Hearts Academy. I thought when I achieve something important, people are going to listen to me and I can share my story and inspire people. And I realized that, hey, even without those great achievements, people are still giving me the opportunity. Maybe not staged like my friend Dharanjaya, not 5,000 people, but 20 people, 10 people, one person, doesn't matter. Every little opportunity that I got, I enjoyed it. I lived my life to the fullest and I thought, I'm going to continue my routine. On top of that, I'm going to enjoy my life. I'm going to be like Usain Bolt. Watch that documentary on BBC. You will see how after training, he goes back, gets into his pool, lights up the barbecue and enjoys a nice beer with his friends. He enjoys life. I started enjoying without putting too much pressure on me. The night before the contest, the story goes to say that I was fall, <laughs> I fell asleep next to a pool because I was just too drunk. And in 2016, once in May, second time in November, I won the two district titles and became the first. And to this day, touch goal, <laughs> only Sri Lankan to win two district titles in one year. I won. And not only that, after I won, I realized I love that routine. I love becoming a high achiever. I love the opportunity that I get to influence people. And I stuck to that routine. And that routine gave me an opportunity last year in 2021 to compete with all the district champions where they had a worldwide festival called the Worldwide Impromptu Speaking Extravaganza, WISE, where they put all the district champions because they technically don't have a world championship for impromptu speaking. They put all these speakers. They had the contest, a new format. And in the first year, I managed to win that as well. So, again, thank you very much uh, for appreciating that. But my point is not that. My point is, when you learn the principles of high performance and you start applying it, you realize that it doesn't matter whether it is one goal or ten goals or whether it doesn't matter whether you achieve it or not. You become a high performer. You know how to ride any wave you know how to achieve any goal <coughs> that doesn't matter what the goal is. Similarly, it doesn't matter what the wave is. You know how to ride it. You can make any wave the perfect wave. So these are the four principles. Set yourself a goal, yes. But after the goal is set, park it and understand that you need to free up yourself to focus on what needs to be done. Number two, what needs to be done becomes a routine. Build the discipline of completing those tasks daily, monthly, weekly, again and again and again and again. That is what gives you the result. Point number three, as you do that, review. Am I making progress? Am I doing this right? Is there knowledge out there that's going to help me get it faster? Review with yourself, with a senior, a mentor or a coach. Review. Number four, learn to celebrate. As you celebrate, and you don't take this, you will flow. And when you flow, that's when you can achieve anything without making it a pressure or a stress. Right, guys, that's my time. Before we wrap up, can I ask you if you remember King Richard Marlon, William's sisters and their life story. All right, I will. I will watch that. Thanks for sharing that, Marlon. Um, about King Richard, okay, about the Williams sisters. Wonderful. So guys, before I go, I want to make sure that you remember these four principles. So take a minute and type it on the chat. Type it, type it, type it. Put some effort, write it on a piece of paper so that you remember this. You can use it in your life and make the best out of it. Take a couple of minutes, type it here. Nice guy, Sean. Great. In the meantime, if you have any questions, 
yes you can either unmute or, or type on the chat and ask me anything on what i said okay gaishan has a question is it also important to select a goal that you love doing every day morning right so here's the thing gaishan i believe you need to have some kind of an emotional connection with your goal simply because without that you will not be able to push yourself to do this on a day in and day out so i would probably say if you don't have an emotional connection with your wife uh, sorry <laughs> not with your wife your goal i know why i said that if you don't have a connection with your goal spend some time and ask yourself the why question why why do i like this goal or why do i not like this goal that exploration might give you a reason so answering you guys shan you don't need to start by liking and loving a goal but after you identify that as a goal you need to build some kind of an emotional connection and how that connection comes is you need to sit and reflect about it i give you a simple example i'm sure nobody here likes to sit and study for a four year degree or a three year masters right i don't think everybody wakes up in the morning thinking hey i'm going to do my masters i don't think it works that way however we all know that it is necessary to take us forward right so how you do that is you build an emotional connection to say that look once i do this i can select a job i can i can do this so you you got to give yourself that emotional connection about studying your degree i, I hope i'm making sense you may not wake up with passion and and drive towards your goal but you need to create that to keep doing it. that's how i would see guys shan i hope that gives you an answer chatraka is giving if you're really happy with your life does goals really matter you still have the energy to reach for that goal okay so here is a thing please don't misunderstand that fulfillment or satisfaction which i believe chatraka is talking about in life enjoying life and being happy about life does not mean that you won't go for more what do i mean by that is you need to understand that as an individual there are certain things that you can achieve in life because of your talent your skills and the situation that you are in right and also another thing about achieving something a goal or or a big success is that it has to serve something other than yourself so here's what i am thinking chatraka you can be happy with your life you can be absolutely chilled i know a lot of people who don't have great ambitions about big cars private planes estates and all of that no they're genuinely very happy with the little that they have right however at a point they want to do something more or achieve something more not for themselves but for the benefit that it serves right so i would say starting off by being very happy with where you are is necessary for you to keep performing well after that when you set yourself a goal try and set a goal or, or give yourself an aim or a target that goes beyond you that is not about just making you happy make it about something that benefits more than yourself i believe when that is the case chaturaka you will have enough energy and focus to come back every day and start doing it i'll give you a simple example as most of you in the tech field knows steve jobs was not a person who enjoyed a lot of personal wealth even for that matter we all know mark zuckerberg doesn't enjoy a lot of personal wealth as far as i know even elon musk does not have the lifestyle of either who dan bilzerian or or any other playboy you have no that we know no so at some point these people have enough comforts in life when you look at someone like okay maybe steve jobs had a lot more complications in his character as far as i think at least you look at a person like oh 
let me take the example non tech but my one of the one of the most successful and kind of an ideal that i work towards is sir richard branson he's very comfortable his life he has a private island in the british virgin islands right he's been to the space been to the mariana trenches crossed the pacific gone there he's pretty much done everything but if you listen to him his drive is better for humanity same with uh, elon musk and everyone so being happy and content i believe is not a bad thing that is one side of your life and i believe you need that after that when you set yourself if you set yourself goals that are not about you where you are growing your wealth by another billion dollars or you are growing uh, buying yourself when you set goals beyond that i believe there is a lot of energy that is created within you to keep coming back and and chasing i i hope that answer this justice to what you want chatraka my bath my morning and evening routine all right my morning is i i'm a christian i believe in god in jesus i start my day with a prayer i say thank you for the day thank you for everything that is in my life my wonderful family uh, the skills that i have the job that i do i'm very grateful to that so that's my first thing that i do after that i love 10 minute meditation if you get some chance download the app called headspace yeah it's a paid promotion but i know it's it's not paid actually but i love promoting headspace because that app really put you in a focused state just 10 minutes a day i do a little bit of a meditation and i try very often to do my morning push ups i i have a challenge with a friend where we try to do about 100 push ups every day if i can't do that i try to catch up something physical in the morning a bit of exercises i play some frisbee so pray meditate and something physical i generally don't have breakfast then i plan my day in terms of what do i have to achieve today set myself a few goals one of the things that i do in the morning is that i give myself a few daily goals that i want to achieve that's what i do and in the night uh well this is probably not advice i should give a lot of people i i try to either read or watch something that i enjoy till a little late in the night i i like that right and i i try to journal a little bit in the night uh, and then fall asleep that's it that's my routine um yeah you can connect your goal with buddhist teaching can do that yohan yes good thanks guys i think dara is probably waiting for me to finish is it uh but it's been wonderful you all have been very interactive maybe we didn't see each other we didn't speak to each other but your interactions during the chat really gave me a lot of energy to keep going so thank you very much i hope what i shared contributes to you in achieving anything that you want in life remember there is no one perfect wave when you know how to ride the wave you can catch any wave and make it perfect right all the best guys and over to you nath me Thank you Sadhu. I'm truly impressed how you put that topic into words.